So as we um, give a chance for everyone else to join, um, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us to learn more on Canadian permanent uh, re residency pathways. Uh, my name is Omar and I'm the Labour Market Development and Immigration Officer with the Cape Breton Partnership. Um, if you don't know what the Cape Breton Partnership is, uh, we are Cape Breton Unamagi's nonprofit economic development organization, and we have a host uh, of programs focused on the attraction and retention of talent. Um, these programs include the Connector Program, the Cape Breton Local Immigration Partnership, and we are also a regional partner to the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration on the delivery of the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. Um, our panelists today are from both the provincial and federal branches of immigration. Uh, Leanne Bartlett is the Stakeholder Liaison Officer with the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration, and Jason Yi is the Outreach Officer with Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada for um, Atlantic Canada. Um, we are also joined by the Cape Breton Partnership's AIP team. We have uh, Kelly McKinnon and Jessica McDonald. They will be moderating the back end uh, as Leanne and Jason present to you on an overview of the Canadian immigration system. So Leanne and Jason will be covering a great deal of information. Um, don't worry, the presentation material will be shared at the end uh, of the session on our partnership page, uh, which we will share in the, in the messages soon. Um, so if you miss anything, don't panic. Um, just stay present in the moment. Just focus with Leanne and, and Jason as they are going through their slides. Um, if, if there's anything that you've missed, uh, you will have the presentations after. So we are using two different platforms right now. Right now you are seeing Slido. This is where you're seeing our, our faces and you're hearing us. Uh, but we will also be using Slido. Slido is an audience engagement tool uh, that we will be using to interact with you throughout the session. Uh, you can answer polls and send in uh, some questions. Um, so to join us on Slido, um, you can either, you're seeing the, the barcode on the right, you can either scan that barcode with your phone uh, camera and it will take you straight into the session or you can go to slido.com and then write pathways to PR in the hashtag box. So before we get started, um, I have three main items I wanted to bring to your attention uh, before Leanne and Jason start uh, their portion. One, uh, the Cape Breton Partnership has a team, which is Kelly and Jessica, working to support employers to learn and engage in the AIP program. So immigration can get complex, and we highly encourage you to reach out um, and refer us to your employers if you'd like support, um, if they would like to support you in attaining permanent residency. Uh, second, Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada has a dedicated page for COVID-19. Um, we encourage you to highlight that page, bookmark it. We will send it to you in a message um, it, to keep track of the most late, the latest information. Also, I have on my Facebook and uh, my Twitter and my Instagram, I'm following IRCC and the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration, um, as well as Canada Border Services Agency as well. All the information as it gets released by the minute, um, I have it marked as show first. First thing I do when I like open Facebook, I see their posts and all the latest information due to COVID-19 because information is changing very rapidly. Um, so I highly encourage you to follow their pages. And the third and last um, piece of advice is, and it is very common that we hear immigration noise and chatter and what that means is that you take sometimes you you hear unverified information and you take it as facts so something like my friend told me this but i heard somewhere that and and so on always double check the information and avoid getting your information from unverified sources um, we also wanted to promote service canada has a webinar tomorrow uh, where they will be covering um, the Canadian tax system for newcomers, uh, benefits and credits, uh, Canada Child Benefit, GST and HST, um, the Canada Emergency Response Benefit and Canada Emergency Student Benefit um, and uh, due to COVID-19 and uh, the potential scams that are going around right now. So we will also share that link for their registration if you're, this is something that you're looking at, um, at seeing. So um, we're going to do a little bit of an exercise right now. I'm going to open, maximize the screen, and we're going to ask you a few questions. So um, we would like to kind of gauge and find out um, what is your current uh, status in Canada. And this will also allow us to see um, how many of you have, have been able to join us on Slido. So you should uh, see this on your phone. 
and you'll be able to vote. Okay. We're seeing a great majority is our CBU students. Okay, so I'm seeing some answers are coming into the chat function um, in the Zoom, the Zoom chat. No, we would like you to join us on Slido. Again, I'm gonna just, you can go to slido.com and write in pathways to PR and it will take you straight to the session. Okay, we're gonna to go to the next question. So if you studied in Canada, have you had post-secondary education prior to coming to Canada? So this could be, this is your second degree um, or this could be your first. Seeing there's some access. Okay. Yeah, we're seeing more number of responses coming in. Great. So you're we have more joining us on Slido. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that link, Jessica. <laughs> um Okay, all right, we'll move to the next one. If you had post-secondary education prior to coming to Canada, was it in any of those regulated fields? Okay. A lot of engineers. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll go to the next one. So the next question is more of where would you like to stay? Would you say you would like to live in Cape Breton or would you like to say that you would like to live in Nova Scotia? or you wanna stay somewhere in Canada, but you're not unsure where. Team Nova Scotia. All right, we're seeing up to 74 responses, which is good. Almost all of you are with us now on Slido. Okay, so the next question, we'll leave it till the end of the session after you get information on permanent residency pathways, and then you can answer which programs you feel are more likely for you uh, to help you attain a uh, permanent um, residency. For now, we'll leave you with a question of if you speak French, and then we'll give it to Jason to start his presentation. Jason, you're good to start. Uh, one second, I'm just gonna share your slides here. I'm gonna leave this on the side. I'm gonna give you access. 
Uh, remote control. Okay. And Jason, I believe you have control. Great. So hello, bonjour, and thank you for joining. My name is Jason Yee, and I'm an outreach officer with IRCC. That's Immigration, Refugees, Citizenship, Canada, the federal government. I would just like to thank the Cape Breton Partnership for organizing today's session. Today's presentation, A Journey to Permanent Residence in Canada, will be delivered in English. Policies and programs can change, so it's important to consult our website for the most up-to-date information. And you'll see that right on screen. That's canada.ca backslash immigration. Today's presentation will be divided into three sections. We're going to start off with some important immigration concepts. Then we're going to take a look at working in Canada. Then we'll move on to some pathways to permanent residence. Leanne from the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration will then present and we will both go over some questions and answers at the end. And just a quick thank you to everyone for submitting the questions in advance. We received many, many, many questions and we're happy to say that a lot of them will be answered in both of our presentations today. As Omar indicated, this presentation will be shared. What is great to know is that each portion that is highlighted is a hyperlink. So you'll be able to click on it to access the most up-to-date information from our website on IRCC. Okay. And now we'll begin. There is often confusion with what a visa is and what a visa does. A temporary resident visa does not give you status in Canada. It allows you to travel to Canada. So a temporary resident visa is placed inside your passport. Once you present yourself to a border services officer at a port of entry, they will make a decision on your entry. So that's your admission to Canada. They will decide on your legal status. So you can be a temporary resident, which includes a visitor, student, or worker, or you can be a permanent resident. And they will also decide on the length of your authorized stay. Depending on the country that you come from, you might not need a temporary resident visa. You might need something called an electronic travel authorization. And once again, you'll notice that the sections are underlined, so you'll be able to click on that for more information. While you're in Canada, you can either be a visitor, you can study, or you can work. And if you notice, you will need a permit to study and to work. The legal status is in Canada is a temporary resident, like we just seen. We have a permanent resident. And at the end of the immigration journey, it is a Canadian citizen. And that's where you'll get a passport from the government of Canada. It's very well possible that while you're studying, you decide or will need to extend your stay as a student. What you can do is apply to extend your study permit, you just need to make sure that you have all the supporting documents from your designated learning institution, and you can apply online. Ideally, we ask you to apply three to four months in advance. If you apply for an extension of a study permit while your old study permit is still valid, you can continue studying until a decision is made on your application. This is something that we called implied status. What is important about this implied status is that you must remain in Canada. Once you leave Canada, you no longer have this implied status. So for most of you, you already have a study permit and you're studying in your eligible program. As a student, you can gain valuable working experience. And we're gonna take a look at that now. So as an international student, there's three types of work. We have work on campus, working off campus, and working that is part of an internship or a co-op program. 
we're going to start taking a look at working on campus. In order to work on campus, you must be a full-time student enrolled at an eligible educational institution. There cannot be any restrictions on your study permit, and you will need a social insurance number. This is something that you can obtain from Service Canada. What is important to note is that you can only start working on campus once you start studying. Okay? And there is no set hours of how much you can work for on-campus employment. Examples of on-work campus, uh, employment on campus is working for the school or a private business that is located directly on school grounds as well. Now we'll take a look at work off campus. So as an international student, in order to be able to work off campus, you need to be a full-time student at a designated learning institute, a DLI. Your program needs to be a minimum of six months, which leads you to a degree with no restrictions. And again, you'll need a social insurance number and start studying. What is important here is that you are not allowed to work more than 20 hours a week during regular academic sessions. Okay, the 20 hours cannot be carried over. So for example, if you're working 15 hours one week, you cannot work 25 hours the week after. Now, part of program, some of part of some programs require you to do a co-op or internship component, and you will need to apply for a work permit. You can do so online with the supporting documents. What is important to note is that the work cannot be more than 50% of your program. Once you complete studying, you have basically two options. You can leave Canada or you can decide to stay in Canada. Once you receive your official transcripts or your, your completion letter, you must stop working immediately because you are no longer considered a student. You must leave Canada within 90 days, even if your study permit is still valid. The other option of staying in Canada, you can either continue studying in a new program, you could change to a visitor status, or you can apply for a work permit. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the working permit option. Most international graduates apply for something for what we call a post-grad work permit. And we're gonna take a look at that on the next screen. Okay. You can apply online and you can be anywhere inside of Canada or outside of Canada. If you apply for this work permit while your study permit is still valid, you can transition to full-time work until a decision is made on your work permit application. Okay. Now you must do so within 90 days okay, once you receive your transcripts in order to work full-time. If there is a decision that says that your application is refused, you must stop working immediately. And now we'll take a look at the postgrad work permit. So what is a postgrad work permit? It's an open work permit that allows you to gain valuable work experience in Canada. And this work experience can help support your permanent residence application as well. What's important to note is that it is only issued one time. It is not renewable. How long is a postgrad work permit valid for? It depends on the length of your program. So from programs from eight months to two years, your postgrad work permit will be the same as that study program. If your program is two years or longer, your postgrad work permit will be for three years. Something that is important to note is that we cannot issue a work permit past the validity of your passport. So this is important planning for you to do as well. So if ever you notice that your passport is about to expire, it's strongly recommended that you take the necessary actions to extend your passport so that you can benefit immediately from the three years if you're entitled to that. And how do you qualify for a postgrad work permit? 
you need to complete your program from the designated learning institute and respect all the conditions. Now the conditions means you did not take any unscheduled breaks or unauthorized leave during your study and you did not exceed the allowable hours of off work campus. So once again, that's 20 hours during a regular academic session. And you'll need to apply for a postgrad work permit within 180 days once you receive your documents from your school. So our journey has taken us here so far where we've graduated, we're gaining some work experience, and now we might be interested in really looking at some options to stay in Canada and apply for permanent residence. Before we take a look at some pathways to permanent residence, we're gonna go through three key concepts. The National Occupational Classification System, not codes. I'm sure most of you know what knock codes are just based on the questions that Leanna and I have both received already. So just to indicate, the National Occupational Classification is a system used by the Government of Canada to categorize jobs and skill level. Why is this important? This is important for your immigration documents. Depending on the type of program that you'll apply for, for example, Express Entry, you will need to have experience in a skilled knock code versus if you use another program such as the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, it is the job offer that you will need to pay attention to with the knock codes. An important information that we'd like to share is once you are visiting our website to really understand and look at which knock code best describes your position, please do not use the title it is important to also use the duties that are listed underneath. A manager for one establishment can have very different responsibilities compared to a manager of another company. And as you notice, our title is highlighted, so you'll be able to also click on that for more information in terms of visiting all the NOC codes. The second key concept that we'd like to look at before moving on to permanent residence is language testing. Every applicant applying for permanent residence must demonstrate their abilities for languages. Okay, so on the screen, you'll see four language tests that are approved from the Government of Canada. They are also equated to the Canadian benchmark, which you'll be able to click after as well. Something that is important about language testing, there are fees associated to this. So that's some planning that you'll need to do as well when you're deciding to apply for permanent residence. And the next concept that we'll look at before we move on to permanent residence is the educational credential assessment. So what is an ECA? It is pretty much an equivalency of foreign education. Now this might not be necessary for you as you may all be completing your education right now in Canada. It might be applicable to your spouse or your partner who is also applying for permanent residence. If that is the case, you can also click on the link right below, which will take you to our website to find a designated organization to get that equivalency. Once again, there are fees to this. So it's some planning on your part as well. And now we'll take a look at Express Entry. Express Entry is a system to manage applications for permanent residence. It is not a program. What we use is a point-based system, okay? And you'll be able to see that. It's called the Comprehensive Ranking System. So Express Entry covers four types of programs, and you'll see that on the screen. We have the Federal Skilled Worker, we have the Federal Skilled Trade, we have the Canadian Experience Class, and we also have a portion of the Provincial Nominee Program. As we mentioned before, we started the Pathways to Permanent Residence. Express Entry is specific to NOC 0A and B. 
When applying for permanent residence, you'll also need to make sure that you have approved language tests that are valid. This is also needed once you complete your express, permission, express entry profile. This is really an overview of each program's requirements. What I'd like to really focus on on this page is that you'll be able to notice that each program has different language requirements. Okay, for sure the experience is different as well because that's really dependent on the type of category that you fall in. But language is required for every single program. Now we're going to take a look at the work experience. Work experience varies per program as well. Okay, and how we count full-time work experience is 1,560 hours a week, okay? Excuse me, a year. That's 30 hours a week of 12 months, okay? You can also be working part-time as well, okay? What we're really looking at is the magic number of 1,560. And if you're working more than one job, we'll just count the one job that reaches the 1,560 hours. This is an overview of how Express Entry works. You'll need to create a profile online, and then you'll be placed in the Express Entry pool. Once you receive an invitation to apply, you can then upload all your documents and make an application for permanent residence with us. When creating your profile, it's important that you keep your information up to date. A profile is valid for one year, and there are no guarantees that if you create a profile, you will be invited to apply for permanent residence. When you're creating your profile, you'll be asked a series of questions. It's important to be truthful because at a later point during the process, we'll ask you to submit the supporting documents for the information that you have placed in your profile. The comprehensive ranking system, points. This always gets a lot of attention and interest. So we use the CRS system. And once again, you're able to click on the links so that you'll be able to view all the information. Your score is combined with a core set of points and additional points. And we're gonna take a look at that a little bit later as well. Express entry invitations to apply are issued to the highest scoring candidates in each round. This information is posted on our website. And if you can see right now, our last round, our most recent round actually on May 15th, the lowest score was 447. So I'm gonna ask you just to remember that, okay? 447 was the lowest points in our last round. This is an overview of how the point system works. So as you notice, there are core human factors, which include factors of your spouse and of your skills. There's also a way to gain additional points. Now, if you look at the additional points, something naturally jumps out. Okay, and if we remember that number that we saw right before of 447, Let's take a look at the provincial nomination. With a provincial nomination, that is worth 600 points alone, okay? I will not be speaking too much about that as Leanne will develop that a little bit further, but that is really interesting just to consider when applying for express entry. Okay. Uh, I'd also like Omar to uh, give the results, if that's possible, to our poll question that we asked earlier. We had uh, just wanted to ask from IRC's perspective, do you speak French? Parlez-vous français? 
Omar, can we get the results? Yeah, so the results were uh, shared back to their phones. Uh, Great. 3% uh, of 87 respondents said yes. Wow, 3%. Bravo. We have a, yeah, we have a few people there. Okay, great. One of the priorities of the government of Canada is to increase francophone immigration outside of Quebec. Okay, so if you speak French, this is a great way to gain additional points. Okay, and if you don't speak French, maybe this is a great way to start learning as it is one of our official languages in Canada. Once you receive the invitation to apply, this is very important to note, you have 60 days to submit your online application for permanent residence. In order to submit your application, you need to ensure that it is a complete application. And that also includes all your supporting documentation. So everything that you filled in when creating your profile, as well as submitting the necessary fees. And we'll take a look at the fees later on. Complete applications are processed in six months or less, and that's about 80% of our time. So six months or less to receive permanent residence is very quick, okay? So this is why, when, before we started talking about Express Entry, it's important for you to plan your language testing, your ECA that you may need to request. This can take some time as well and takes money. What's important to note is that Express Entry is not a program for Quebec. Quebec manages its own Express Entry system. Now, it's possible that Express Entry is not the program for you, okay? But that's okay. There are many other types of programs from the provinces and territories. We have other federal programs as well. You're able to gain more work experience on a work permit. You can consult our website just to see what other programs are available to you. One of the programs that is specific that I would just like to introduce is the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program, or what you may hear as AIP. The Atlantic Immigration Pilot was launched in March 2017 and has two special features. Okay. It is a program reserved specifically for the Atlantic region. So that is the four provinces, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, and Newfoundland Labrador. And it is employer driven. So the employer plays a big role with this program. Leanne will be speaking about AIP a little bit further. So I won't be going on to this now. So, as I mentioned before, a complete application includes submitting the fees. When submitting a fee for permanent residence, you'll need to include application fee and write a permanent residence fee. The information on your screen is up to date as of today. It's also possible that you'll be required to demonstrate a proof of funds, depending on the program that you apply for. Now, a proof of funds doesn't mean that IRCC will ask you to submit a check for that amount. It means that you need to demonstrate that you have access to that amount. And there are also exemptions as well. For example, if you have a valid job offer, you do not need to demonstrate proof of funds. Okay. So your journey through permanent residence is complete. There are different federal, provincial, and territorial programs that can grant you permanent residence of Canada. Now, it's important to remember that even with a nomination from the province or territory, IRCC will be the final decision maker for admitting permanent residents. Now, we received lots of questions regarding when is the best time to apply? And that answer really depends on you. Okay. The best time to apply is when you're eligible. 
your pathway depends on your unique combination of skills and experience. You don't need to be an international student to be applying for permanent residence. You may be a spouse as an international student who is already in an application for permanent residence. If you have any questions, please visit our website for the most up-to-date information. And if there are any inquiries about case-specific applications, you can visit our Client Support Centre by phone or send a web form. There is an annex included in this presentation with how you can gain, uh, with additional slides, excuse me, of how you can gain additional points in Express Entry, and you'll be able to view that afterwards on your own as well. Okay, so that completes the portion of IRCC, and now I'll pass it to Leanne. Thank you. Jason, I'm just going to share Leanne's slides. And switch control. All right, Leanne, I think you should be good to go. Okay. So, hi, thank you, uh, Omar and Jason. And my name is Leanne. And I work with the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration with the provincial government here in the province. And Jason has shared a lot of great information with you. So I'll actually give your brains a little bit of a break just to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been with the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration since 2007, so 13 years. And a big part of my job is doing presentations like this and meeting with international students, basically working with international students and international graduates to help you figure out how you can stay in Nova Scotia once you complete your studies. And so that's a big part of my job. And I would say it's one part of my job that I really love to do. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here giving a presentation. I truly, I truly do enjoy this part of my job. Okay, it's not letting me advance the slide. Okay, did you do that, Omar, or did I? You wanna try again? One sec, can you, can you try again? Got it. So one of the reasons why I do and enjoy this part of my job so much, okay, it's gone back to the first slide. Okay, we're gonna close control and give it back to you again, okay? Okay, sorry, no, technical glitch. It's bound to happen. So it says waiting, so I think you should get a kind of a, a confirmation. No, you're not seeing no. it? No, no. Okay, stop and do it again. Did it come up? Oh, no. yeah, you're moving my you're moving my mouse. So so try to click or use the keyboard. No, still not. Uh, okay, let me try something else. Hold on. Okay. 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 So um, I also wanted to start by saying thank you to all of the international students and graduates who are on the line of all the places in the world that you could have studied, you chose to study in Nova Scotia, to study in Cape Breton. And our, our province is very thankful for that. You 
offer a lot to this province. You help make this province a better place to live. And we hope that you make the most of your experience here as an international student. Really embrace your life as an international student here. Consider working while you're studying, if you can. As Jason had mentioned, you could possibly work off campus or work on campus, or you may even have co-ops or internships that are part of your study program. Getting that work experience certainly can help with a future permanent residency application. Of course, we want you to work hard in school and get good grades. However, we hope that you are able to explore Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is a beautiful province. Cape Breton is spectacular. We hope that you have a chance to explore the province and we hope that you fall in love with the province and that you're able to stay after you graduate. I'll just tell you a little story. Last year, I was talking to an international graduate who got her degree from a university here in Nova Scotia. And she was working here in the province and had been for a couple of years. And she actually had to go home to Mexico because her father was ill. So she had to go back home to Mexico to see him. And she spent a period of time there with him and the rest of her family. And she told me that when she came back to Nova Scotia, it felt like home too. So I hope that all of you who are on the line get to that point as well. Maybe you already have. Uh, and if you haven't, I hope you will get to that point and make Nova Scotia your second home. So let's give this a try. I'll just flip for you, Leanne, okay? Okay, let's do that. Okay. So how do you stay after graduation? So just to recap what Jason has covered so far, he talked about that post-graduation work permit, that special work permit that you should be eligible for once you complete your studies. And that work permit will allow you to get work experience, Canadian work experience, and allow you to stay temporarily here in the country. Jason already also talked about the Federal Express Entry System and the permanent residency programs within the Express Entry System. That's the Federal Skilled Worker, the Federal Skilled Trades and Canadian Experience class. So what I'm gonna focus on talking about is the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, and many of you on the line have probably heard of it. That is a federal government program as well. However, our office and the province of Nova Scotia has a big role to play in the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, and I'll explain that as we move forward. And what else I'm going to talk about is our provincial nominee program or our Nova Scotia nominee program and I saw in the chat box there were some questions coming through about what is the provincial nominee program or the Nova Scotia nominee program so that's what I'm here to talk to you about. So depending on what your situation is once you complete your studies here in Nova Scotia that and depending on what your background is and if you have work experience that will help you determine which permanent residency program could be an option for you so for instance if you have a job offer from a nova scotia employer there are different options each with their own requirements so one option could be the skilled worker stream of our Nova Scotia nominee program, or we also call it the provincial nominee program. Or it could be the occupations in demand stream of our provincial nominee program, or maybe the Atlantic immigration pilot could be an option for you if you have a job offer from a Nova Scotia employer. If you, <clears throat> 
complete your studies here, you have your postgrad work permit, you've been working here in the province and you've been working in skilled jobs, going back to what Jason was talking about in the NOx system and the different skill levels for jobs within the NOx system. For our Nova Scotia Experience Express Entry Stream, if you have one year of skilled work experience in the province, maybe that could be an option for you. Or maybe you don't want to work for somebody else. Maybe you want to open your own business or purchase an existing business. Then we have an option for that as well, the International Graduate Entrepreneur Stream of our Nova Scotia nominee program. So now I'm going to go into some of the details and the eligibility. Go ahead, Omar. Yeah. Okay, so the first one. This is the skilled worker stream of our Nova Scotia nominee program. And I will highlight a couple of things here. First off, you must have a permanent full-time job offer from a Nova Scotia employer. So what we mean by permanent is that the job does not have an end date. And the job offer can be in NOC skill level zero, A, B, or C. If you are on a post-grad work permit, then an occupation in NOC skill level D wouldn't be acceptable, but you can get a job offer in NOC zero, A, B, or C. If you do get a job in NOC skill level C, under the skilled worker stream, you would have to work for that Nova Scotia employer for six months before you could be eligible to apply for this particular stream. And the other thing that I wanted to highlight here is that if you do gain work experience, paid, paid work experience during your studies, that work experience could be considered towards the one year of work experience that's required for the skilled worker stream. Even work experience that you obtained back home, depending on how long ago that was, that may be considered. Okay, now we'll move on to the next one. Occupations in demand, that's a stream within the Nova Scotia nominee program as well. With this one, this stream focuses, focuses on two specific occupations, truck driver or continuing care assistant. So if you are offered a permanent full-time job after you complete your studies as a truck driver or as a continuing care assistant, this occupations in demand stream could be an option for you. Again, with this one, you would have to have at least one year of work experience. Again, that work experience could be gained during your studies. And depending on how long ago, it could be work experience gained in, in your home country or in another country. Okay. Another stream in our Nova Scotia nominee program is Nova Scotia Experience. And this stream is connected to the federal government's express entry system. So you may recall that Jason indicated that to participate in the express entry system, you have to create an express entry profile. So if you want to apply to Nova Scotia Experience Express Entry, you do need to create that profile. With this one, you do not need a job offer to apply. 
the focus of this stream is that you have gained at least one year and it can be a three-year period work experience here in the province again that's work experience in knox skill level zero a or b and also want to emphasize that it has to be skilled work experience that you gained after graduation okay omar so I've outlined all of these different streams within the Nova Scotia nominee program. You could be eligible for one of them or two of them. Oh, sorry, before I get onto the process, one last stream that I'll talk about under the Nova Scotia nominee program. No, go ahead, Omar. Okay. International graduate entrepreneur. So as I mentioned earlier, maybe you don't want to work for a company here in the province. Maybe you want to start or buy a Nova Scotia business, that's certainly possible. You'd have to operate the business for at least one year and it must be a viable business and you have at least one full-time employee and that employee would have to be a Canadian or a permanent resident. Okay, go ahead. So the process, so as I mentioned, you could be eligible for the skilled worker stream of our nominee program or Nova Scotia Experience Express Entry or Occupations in Demand or the International Graduate Entrepreneur. So based on being eligible for one of those streams, you would submit a complete application to our office, the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration. And on our website, which I'll give you later, there's an application guide for all of the streams within our Nova Scotia nominee program and that application guide explains the eligibility requirements in more detail and also includes a document checklist that shows everything that you need to submit a complete application to our office. And if you are approved by us or nominated by us, then you would go ahead and apply to the federal government for permanent residency. So we would be the first step under the Nova Scotia nominee program. And if you are approved or nominated, then you would apply to the federal government for permanent residency. And the permanent residency processing time at the second step really depends on what stream you applied to under the Nova Scotia nominee program. For instance, if you apply to our skilled worker stream, then the processing time for PR at the federal level would be about 18 months. If you were approved by our office under the Nova Scotia Experience Express Entry Stream, and you applied to the federal government for permanent residency, the processing time would be within six, six months, 80% of the time. Okay. So I've talked about the Nova Scotia nominee program and the different streams within it. Now I'm going to shift my focus to the Atlantic immigration pilot that Jason briefly talked about. Again, this is a federal government program and but the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration has a big role to play in how this program is administered and you'll understand that more when I talk about the process in the next slide but I just want to stay here on this slide first within the Atlantic Immigration Pilot there's three different programs Atlantic High Skilled Atlantic Intermediate Skilled and Atlantic International Graduate. And the Atlantic International Pro Graduate Program within the pilot is very attractive to international students and international graduates because as you can see highlighted on the slide, you do not need work experience to be eligible. 
However, there are obviously other requirements that you would have to meet to be eligible for the International Graduate Program, like you do need a job offer from a Nova Scotia employer. The study program that you do in Atlantic Canada, as this is an Atlantic Canadian program, the study program that you complete must be at least two years in length. And when you do apply for permanent residency under the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, you must have graduated within the 24 months before you submit your permanent residency application. Okay? A difference with the other two programs within the pilot high skilled and intermediate skilled, one of the differences is you do need to have one year of work experience. Okay, so what's the process? Let's go to the next slide. So our role at the Nova Scotia Office of Immigration is working with the employers. As Jason mentioned during her, his presentation, this program is employer driven. With the nominee program that I spoke about earlier, it's you, the individual, that submits an application to our office to be assessed. That's under the Nova Scotia nominee program. With the Atlantic Immigration Pilot, it's actually employers here in Nova Scotia that submit applications to our office. And the first step for an employer to participate in the pilot is the employer must apply to become designated. So it's like they're registering with the pilot. They must meet certain requirements that we have. And if they are approved as a designated employer, then that means they're eligible to recruit and hire people using the Atlantic Immigration Pilot. So let's say, um, ABC company in Nova Scotia offers an international graduate from Cape Breton University a job, then that employer would submit an endorsement application to our office for that CBU international graduate. And that employer's endorsement application for that graduate must include various documents, including the job offer, if we approve the employer's endorsement application for that international graduate, then the international graduate can go ahead and apply to the federal government for permanent residency. And if required, if the international graduate's work permit will expire during this process, it is possible to apply for a new work permit that would be specific to the employer that has offered the international graduate a job. So again, the first two steps, employer designation and employer endorsement, the employer is submitting applications to our office. And then if the employer's endorsement application for a particular individual, for a particular job is approved by us, then the individual can go ahead and apply to the federal government for permanent residency. And that permanent residency process, that it takes within six months, 80% of the time. Okay. So I just wanted to highlight a couple of things about the Atlantic Immigration Pilot. Maybe you're an international graduate, but you're actually not eligible for the international graduate program within the pilot. That's okay, all is not lost. You could be eligible for the intermediate skilled program or the high skilled program within the pilot. And you may get a job offer from a designated, you may get a job offer from an employer who's already designated and wants to support you through the pilot, that's great. Or you may get a job offer from an employer that's not designated, but maybe they want to become designated, in which case that employer would get in contact with us. 
another point, maybe there are employers here in the province who are designated but are not hiring right now. And maybe the pilot is, is not the option for you. Maybe it's using our Nova Scotia nominee program and that's fine. Okay. I think that's it, Omar, for me. Yes, that's our website. As I mentioned, all the application guides for the Nova Scotia nominee program, all of the stream application guides are posted there. There's information on our website about the Atlantic Immigration Pilot. The information on our website about the Atlantic Immigration Pilot is targeted towards employers. Um, and our email address is there as well if you wanted to email the office or call the office. So that's it for my portion.